Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of the D-Web Decoded podcast. I am not your usual host, Aaron Stanley. My name's Robert. I work for the Filecoin Foundation. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about Phil Hong Kong, where we're broadcasting from. I'm joined by Irma Zhang and Jing Guo, who uh, are going to tell us all about this uh, great event. So Irma is from ND Labs, and she is the host of this event. And maybe we could get started uh, talking about what your goals of the event were and whether or not they've met expectation uh, so far. Yeah, um, allow me to uh, do a brief introduce of myself. Hi guys, uh, I'm Irma Jiang from the ND Labs and uh, um, we really appreciate that we have hosted this uh, Phil Hong Kong, the network base and uh, uh, Actually, for the field, the goal of the field Hong Kong, uh, we wanted to generate the storage providers and uh, uh, engineers and developers uh, for the future FVM or the IPC network update, and uh, we want to uh, get updated with the overall communities in APAC region, especially. Uh, Actually, as for the few Hong Kong's guests now, are um, not only based in uh, Hong Kong and. Uh, Regional China. Uh, also, we have lot. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, members from the other uh, countries uh, in APAC region. Uh, we really appreciate it. Mm, that's all. That's it for me now. Thank you. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Jenks, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, you? my name is Jenks. I'm a developer advocate at Filecoin Foundation. It's a uh, very uh, fortunate to have a great partner uh, like Andy Labs to to co-host this event. Um, as uh, Irma said, Hong Kong as, acts as a gateway to all different kinds of resources in APAC region, uh, China included. Uh, a lot of we saw a lot of developers traveling from China, uh, storage providers in the APAC region participating in this event, uh, and also very surprisingly, and not to uh, to a big surprise, the surprising part is like we always know what each teams are doing. Whoever is coming to speak at our events. But every time they speak and uh, do their demo of their software, what they have built, and uh, talk about their program, we always get surprised by how much they have progressed. So today, y yesterday, we had a full day of event, and we just keep getting surprised by them. Um, we had uh, tools uh, designed for storage providers. We have tool designed for data onboarding, so some tools that you and I can use. We also have AI tools uh, being showcased on the event. Um, one of the most exciting thing that we want to uh, sort of um, we want to so, want to so, sort of all is, uh, is joining the um, the AI hype that is going on right now. Um, we uh, we're fortunate to have a lot of uh, kind of uh, projects mentioning uh, in that direction too. I believe that. Yeah. I think this is a great segue to maybe talk about content. Um, Jenks, you mentioned a couple of demos. Yeah. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about a demo or two that you found particularly compelling, yeah. uh, all about them and how they're relevant to Filecoin. And then Irma could tell us about why she chose to put them on stage. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Because I'm a little bit. My work is uh, a little bit more closer to a storage provider these days. Um, we saw the demo of CID Gravity. Uh, the funder actually traveled all the way from France to this event to talk about their tooling. They're primarily uh, focused on uh, making storage providing business really, really easy. So it's a SaaS platform that you can sign up and it connects to Lotus Node and Boost uh, to be able to uh, manage your storage array, but also take deals and allow people to retrieve it very easily. Uh, what surprised me is how much they have built and how uh, and they can provide uh, pretty much very performant um, storage into Filecoin array and then retrieve them very quickly. Um, so almost like a hot storage layer um, and it's just the maturity of it is really, 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 really good. Um, the other tool, like probably on the competing side, is a is is a is a company called uh, Z, CZ Labs. Uh, they they made a uh, made one that has Chinese interface, um, and it's customized for uh, Hong Kong region. Um, so if any storage provider based in Hong Kong, they can um, uh, they can use this kind of software. So just they're solving the same problem, but in their own flavors. Uh, that's something that, um, that that I really enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, discovering um, this event. Yeah, I enjoyed the demos uh, too. Uh, Irma, maybe uh, you could tell us what the motivation was to put demos uh, like these on on stage here. Yeah, um, actually, yesterday um, there was a really interesting 
uh, image is that uh, when Paul from the Fieldcoin Foundation uh, did her uh, did his speech, um, he he was talk about the price of their uh, storage providers uh, IDC. And the most storage provider will stand up and take pictures of of, of his speech. Um, that was really interesting, and uh, uh, so we can know from that a uh, storage provider are more have more and more uh, still have more and more interesting in the price in different areas. Actually, um, especially uh, Paul are uh, have really good experience in the APEC. APAC region and uh, was the uh, price of different IDC and some materials. I, I, um, I'm not quite sure about the, the name of, of the material, but um, I think uh, that's the one thing that we know that the storage are uh, storage providers are um, curious about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's I, IDC cost mm -hmm. is a, a big fraction of the cost of doing storage providing business. And uh, not many people in the world has that uh, uh, experience and knowledge on uh, roughly calculating the cost of this. So mm -hmm. Paul did a really good job on doing uh, this kind of analysis with different storage providers that is, uh, that is already going on with storage provider business or just considering joining it. He can do, I've seen it in act, him in action doing uh, napkin math with, uh, with storage provider to figure out uh, the return uh, of their of their investment um, in this uh, start providing business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Paul Wagner. He works for the Filecoin Foundation, and maybe he'll be a future guest on a future uh, DWeb Decoded uh, yeah. uh, podcast. Um, Irma, what other uh, speakers did you find particularly compelling here at Phil Hong Kong? Uh, yeah, um, actually, the um, digital team. Yeah. Uh, digital team. Uh, two people from the digital team. Uh, one is Jenkins and one is Mara. Yeah. And uh, they were talking about the new business business model for storage provider. Uh, actually, uh, I didn't <coughs> I didn't uh, introduce the ND Labs. Uh, we uh, are we were a storage provider and we are now uh, providing the service. Uh, uh, Storage service for some storage providers and technologies, uh, tech, 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 technology, uh, technical service. Sorry, technical service for some storage providers. So uh, we are, uh, we feel uh, really uh, excited about the new business business model that uh, from the fabulous team, and uh, they provide us uh, new opportunities to earn more rewards. Not only the block block rewards for the storage provider. I think um, actually the one thing that Mara was uh, mentioned about is um, we don't want Fieldcoin free, um, free Fieldcoin um, service. Uh, Fieldcoin service for free, um, but we, we don't want for free, uh, we want to earn more. Um, so uh, I think that's a really good point we learned from yesterday. Yeah. yeah, you want to charge for providing yeah, services. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pay for, uh, pay for storage. Service. Maybe, Jenks, you want to tell the audience a little bit more about the effort uh, to do paid storage deals on Filecoin? Yes, yeah, sure. So the ultimate goal for Falcon Network is to facilitate this storage marketplace that where you have data clients that has a lot of needs, let's say a business with a few petabytes of archival data, and they want to put it on the, uh, a data center. Um, the best option uh, is actually a local data center that they work with. That's exactly what Filecoin Network is designed for. And so uh, we will, we had a, a large incentive for people to build up infrastructure. We had a lot of incentive going on through help of a Filecoin Plus program to onboard certified use for data to the network. Uh, but what we really want uh, in the future is actually clients paying directly for these services and in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Uh, so that's what Irma is talking about uh, uh, on Jane's talk. Uh, we're, uh, we're encouraging different kind of solutions and different kinds of business model that can help us with that. Uh, either that's dealing with archival data that like I mentioned earlier, or building a middleware solution such as Banyan. Um, like, uh, there's also a uh, Chinese-based one called Titan, Titan Storage. They, are, they're, they also build a, like a um, software layer for putting uh, storage from normal people's uh, web, web, web browsers or um, uh, on their computers to Filecoin storage and allow people to retrieve that through a CDN network. So we're, we're hoping this kind of software is able to face 
um, individuals, individual customers, small to medium enterprises, and for larger enterprises, we expect them to uh, deal with uh, storage providers kind of directly, and we're helping to consummate the match uh, in this market. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Um, it's so great to talk about content. I think uh, the audience of this podcast really got a feel of the type of demos and talks that happened here at Phil Hong Kong. Uh, another huge component of the event is the networking. Um, so maybe each of you can speak a little bit to your experiences with the networking here at Phil Hong Kong, uh, where everyone's come from, and the type of conversations you've had uh, so far. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's always very energetic here. Um, Hong Kong is a hub for uh, not only uh, main China, but also the rest of the area is quite international. So we get a very diverse crowd here. Um, people, uh, people come to our events all from different backgrounds, and they're willing to, to talk to us. Uh, some of them are, uh, uh, you know, participated in Filecoin before, some of them are pro used to or is still providing storage, and some of them are developers that are looking into this. We met, um, yeah, we just, uh, we just had a lot of interest. Um, because of the Web3 festival hosted by uh, Hashkey is going on right now, we do have a lot of food traffic from uh, just different projects uh, curious about Filecoin. So I've been interfacing with a few of them that is interested in linking uh, whatever they're building to Filecoin. So we spoke to someone building an on-chain database and they're very interested in collaborating with us to use some storage space that we can provide or perhaps a deeper integration with the IPC uh, that is coming up soon. Um, I've had uh, uh, connections with some um, uh, companies uh, or organizations working for uh, NGOs in, in, uh, in Hong Kong, and they're super interested in getting, uh, because of our social impact work that we had done in the United States and around the world, they are super interested in collaborating with us and bring uh, sort of Filecoin verified uh, storage solution to universities and some government, non-government uh, organizations here that, that desperately need it. Um, so it's, it's just things like that is happening um, <laughs> uh, multiple times uh, during the event. Uh, it's uh, definitely really reinvigorating. Yeah. I believe it. Irma? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, also like uh, Jing said, um, we, have, we have sold a lot of um, teams, uh, not only the infrastructure, doing the infrastructure, also um, uh, one team that I met yesterday is uh, want, uh, he wants to do GameFi uh, on the field coin, which is really interesting. Um, I'm not, uh, and uh, I was asking him about uh, what was the his project name, and uh, um, he he said uh, he's gonna surprise me uh, after the event because <laughs> uh, uh, it might be um, he might be. Uh, online, uh, on chain, uh, alive his project after um, this month. So, um, which is really interest. Uh, like the man, uh, like him, he want to come out this uh, come this uh, event to see what the Fieldcoin community are doing, and uh, does the Fieldcoin community are uh, welcome those um, project uh, like like him. Uh, to uh, to do this uh, thing, thing like uh, the project like this. So um, whether the FVM is um, okay or uh, is there any other opportunities uh, can doing this? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely a lot of uh, uh, kind of discovery uh, conversations yeah. here. Uh, people are very curious because uh, we have a track record of uh, uh, establishing uh, a, a de decentralized uh, infrastructure. I would like to also mention we um, so we are ho uh, Indie Labs is the primary host uh, of the event. Actually, the host we're we're assisting them uh, to run this. And uh, but Indie Labs is not doing this alone. We also had extensive help from a new web group. Um, the, the organization, they are, are also send a lot of staff uh, to so, support this event. And also um, OpenGay, so one of our Orbit member, yeah. they brought their NFT here. Uh, and Titan Network, they are, uh, they are doing airdrops um, of their Titan token that is going to be launched in the future. So that's uh, like, it's very <laughs> just a few uh, things to, to show that how much uh, community effort there is 
um, and they really want to um, c continue to do something with us in the future. Yeah, uh, I really want to mention here, and uh, uh, we really get much more supported by the Fieldcoin Foundation and the community members uh, from New Web Group, OpenGate, uh, FieldFi, and the FieldLite, uh, which which was was really great, and we uh, also uh, the com uh, Orbit community members and uh, in China region, and uh, we have done a lot of offline events before. Um, so, and um, I really appreciate, it. and uh, we can do this together. Uh, without without uh, Fieldcoin Foundation, without those, um, we can't make it. I really excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Irma, would you like to tell the audience a little bit about what the Orbit program is and how ND Labs and uh, Greater Heat and New Web Group and all these companies in the region are involved in Orbit? Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, ND Labs and the New Web Group are the regional leads of the Orbit community in uh, re region China. And uh, we um, are engaging in uh, encouraging more people, not only in the Fieldcoin community, to know uh, more about the, how the decentralized storage are work, uh, is working and how the Fieldcoin is, um, is, is used. Not only for the storage provider, we are also welcome for the uh, welcome uh, the developers and uh, in, um, like the marketing team are also welcome and uh, we can do the online event um, like the space, a uh, Twitter space and uh, we can do the, um, we will and we can uh, do the um, offline event and um, uh, I, so, there are some works can do for the Orbit community members as uh, like we can uh, translate some, uh, we know that uh, there are much more documents are in uh, English, but uh, as for the uh, region China, uh, the people, uh, community people are um, really want to have some uh, Chinese version and uh, the members from the Orbit, uh, Orbit community um, uh, is, Actually, is responsible to uh, to translate in Chinese Chinese version. So uh, we welcome you guys come and join, and uh, uh, we're gonna do more excited exciting works. Um, Jenks just wrapped up a roadshow in China um, uh, with the Orbit community. Maybe uh, Jenks, you want to comment on this a little bit? Sure. Yeah. In January, we uh, we went to China to host uh, a few Orbit um, uh, Orbit events, all done by uh, through the help of Orbit uh, members there. So we went to uh, Shanghai. Uh, uh, we went to Shanghai, Chengdu and Shenzhen, where most of the developer communities are. Uh, so we were w really well received in, in those events. Yeah, we, um, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was very nice to see a lot of people still participating uh, in, a, in a network um, in, in those regions, yeah. Because uh, some of our largest um, uh, community members are based, uh, based there. Yeah, um, one thing uh, is interesting with the road show is um, actually for Shanghai, uh, Chengdu, and Shenzhen, there's a uh, different, um, like um, there's much more venture capital uh, went to Shanghai, um, and uh, there's much more storage provider went to Shenzhen, and there's much more uh, storage provider and uh, developers went to uh, Chengdu. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, different yeah. area has different, uh, target people. So like uh, the roadshows we did in this event, uh, a lot of sort of heavy uh, participants of the network gave us feedback, especially uh, to the foundation on how the project should be governed going forward um, and how we should help the community to grow certain area. Uh, so for example, uh, the ecosystem growth of FEM projects, infrastructure building, what is lacking, uh, and uh, the pace of the governments and how, uh, how much we should weight certain participants um, uh, kind of role in the, in the governance process. That was brought up multiple times. Uh, in, in the roadshow and also um, over here. So people really care about this project and people wants to 
uh, wants to help us to make it better. Yeah, that's uh, most. Uh, sometimes the words are harsh to listen to, but yeah. uh, we we know that everyone. Intent is very good. They want to see decentralized storage take off uh, in the future, and they would like to see this business model uh, ultimately work for the world. Yeah, and I think this is uh, maybe why Phil Hong Kong as an event is such an important forum uh, for the Filecoin Foundation to interact with the Filecoin uh, ecosystem in APAC, and why we're so grateful to ND Labs for hosting and uh, putting this together. Yeah, the the vibe here is just really good. Uh, Hong Kong um, is, uh, you know, the, the policy is really friendly to the industry. Uh, this Hashkey group hosting this large crypto event um, in the in the central hub uh, of of APAC region. Um, we are uh, just seeing institutions and uh, different kinds of participants, including Hong Kong government, they have a work task force on, on, on pushing Web3 agenda forward. And we spoke to many people from uh, the Cyberport government in incubate, incubation program. Uh, there is just a lot of uh, uh, like uh, Web3 funders and, uh, and, um, and uh, yeah, investors <laughs> that are looking for, looking for things to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a day of the network base left. And tomorrow, we're going to have a presence at the uh, Web3 Festival, which is a larger uh, conference here in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm curious what each of you are looking forward to as uh, we wrap up our time here in Hong Kong. Um, actually, for uh, the Web3 Festival, it's a really um, influence, uh, have a really great influence uh, in Hong Kong, and not only in Hong Kong, but also the uh, overall APAC region, um, we can know, uh, I believe that there will much more people um, during uh, just like hang out in the stage and they're gonna say, oh, there's a few coin event, I'm gonna take a look. Uh, I, I really want to meet that people like this. Uh, they, they are curious about what is Phil coin doing now. And uh, actually, uh, for, um, much more people know what is Phil coin, but they, um, Recently, I, I'm not sure whether they are uh, really um, know about what is Philcoin now, uh, doing now. Uh, but I, um, I want and uh, to tell them and um, come here and uh, take a look. And we are doing something like this, and uh, you have some opportunity to um, to work with us. There's much more opportunity that you can you can engage in. Yeah. Yeah. Community update to the community is the first goal. Um, and then uh, ask for their uh, patents, uh, probably following. Uh, what I'm really looking forward for today is today is FEM and Deeping Day. So Deeping is a really hot topic right now. We would like to uh, really discuss thoroughly on this topic. Uh, we will also have a, uh, have a reception uh, event tonight called Deeping Party. Uh, we invited a few kind of players in uh, in the, in the deep in place, and they all know about Filecoin. They are all working on physical, building physical products that is connected to blockchain. Uh, so we're gonna have a great conversation there. So on the Fal uh, Web3 Festival uh, stage that you were talking about, um, we did that last year and it was very well received. We hope to repeat, the, uh, repeat that again. Yeah. Um, yes, last year was very exciting. Um, and it was great to see uh, Juan on stage here in Hong Kong, and uh, he gave a great talk. Um, Jenks, you mentioned a deep end party. Yeah. Maybe you could just uh, briefly explain for the audience how Filecoin fits into the context of deep end. Yeah, sure. So deep end stands for um, decentralized physical infrastructure. It's a topic that's been coined by uh, the industry probably from December last year. And Falcon gets mentioned a lot, and so does uh, another project called Helium, which does wireless, uh, decentralized wireless networks. Uh, we get mentioned a lot because, um, because our uh, Falcon network protocol is really designed for commercial grade, um, commercial grade servers to be connected and provide storage in the future, more uh, retrieval and compute. Um, because of the performance requirements and, and, the, and by design, a lot of them have to be run on bare metal uh, infrastructure. So meaning that you can't do this on the cloud or it's very hard or costly to do this on the cloud. The only way is to 
buy, purchase those equipment, set it up in a data center or uh, build a data center to host it uh, over there because we need really, really uh, performant machines uh, on network to, to, to provide to the enterprises out there. Uh, so because of that, we actually have a very large uh, amount of infrastructure built on bare metal, and there are not a lot of web server project that is able to achieve that. So we did a very good job in attracting uh, uh, providers that are willing to contribute that. So this community is very, so we call them storage provider communities. In the future, we might call them compute uh, providers and all that. Um, but this is very good because these are the group of people that really believe in uh, the Web3 way. And they also have probably sometimes five to 10 or even 15 years of doing IT businesses and setting up like data centers, networking, you know, all these um, uh, architect uh, enterprise server racks, uh, they're the only people who, with, who have the skills to do this. If we were to onboard um, an app like uh, WeChat or, uh, or, or Didi on, uh, onto Web3 in the future, maybe there's a Web3 version of it, um, we can't do that without having physical uh, infrastructure that is as powerful as the cloud today. So, um, so yeah, that's how we tie into, uh, into the kind of a deeping narrative of this year, and it's great to, to see us being mentioned in, in many people's uh, event and, uh, um, and, and uh, uh, any kind of uh, publication. Yeah, so, yeah, nice. Um, before I ask my last question, um, I have a specific question for Irma. Um, so it's worth noting that, uh, or maybe I should reiterate, that Phil Hong Kong is being hosted by a community member, ND Labs. And uh, this, the concept of a Phil City event, uh, it can be hosted anywhere by any uh, community member uh, with the support of the Filecoin Foundation. So um, Irma, maybe uh, just uh, for the audience that might be interested in hosting a Phil event in their city, uh, maybe you could speak a little to um, what the process was like, what support you got from the Filecoin Foundation, and uh, you know, whether you would want to host it again next year. Yeah, uh, of course, and absolutely, I want to host again for the next year. And uh, uh, the vibe of, uh, of Hong Kong is really good and uh, for the Web3 project. Uh, actually, for the process of the, that, uh, whether you want to host it um, in, one, in your country, uh, you can choose um, reach out to the Phil Coin Foundation event team. Also, you can reach out to the Orbit, uh, Orbit community uh, in your region, and uh, uh, actually, uh, I really appreciate Robot and uh, the Elsa and the Jinx. Uh, they did really uh, uh, good and much more uh, supported to to me. And um, the first step is um, uh, you have to set the venue <laughs> and uh, um, the set, choose the venue and uh, uh, the how how many days you want to how uh, you want to. Uh, host and uh, uh, the whole process is uh, you reach out to the event team and uh, we, we did a really um, we uh, weekly uh, call uh, weekly call for it's about um, a month uh, and uh, to talking about the goal and uh, which target uh, was the target person that we want to uh, reach out and uh, um, then uh, we set the uh, agenda. Ag agenda and the marketing, uh, the, the marketing strategy, and uh, uh, was and the sponsorship and the partner we want to co cooperate with. Um, yeah, we received a lot of help from yeah. Andy Labs on localizing the content because <laughs> it's very uh, language is a barrier. Most of our material. Uh, and some of our speakers only speak English. So um, yeah, it's, that's why it's so good to have uh, local community members to help us with this kind of events. Otherwise, it will be a lot harder for us to, to do it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, make, we'll probably make a lot of mistakes. Uh, so thankfully, with uh, ND Lab's help and Orbit members' help, we can, uh, we can avoid making those mistakes. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And we work together very well. Um, I'd so, say so. Yeah, it's it's really a, came together great. The team is very responsive, flexible, and we all know our goals. Uh, we have, uh, we all know the policies uh, and community practice very well. Uh, so we're carrying out, um, yeah, in the local context. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that, Irma. It's, 
You've been very easy to work with, and so is your whole team. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. I believe the audience here are uh, much interested in about uh, to host the event. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe it. Um, okay, last question. Um, based on everything you heard here at Phil Hong Kong, uh, what is something you're excited about in the Filecoin ecosystem, maybe over the next six months or a year, or something you found very compelling that you learned for the first time while you were here? Um, yeah, you're welcome to answer either of those. Um, yeah, uh, also, like I mentioned before, as a storage provider and uh, for our um, business model, as uh, we want to uh, learn more about uh, what's the new opportunity that uh, for the storage provider can do for the next uh, um, like few years or few months. And um, I think I'm going to reach out to Mara and uh, Jing. Um, I really have a good uh, interest in exploring the new opportunity. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a D-Store team. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, I um, uh, always uh, look out for storage providers, developers, and uh, the the builders in the ecosystem, like uh, projects building on uh, FEM. So for storage providers, it's a really good time to become a storage provider because tooling just got a lot easier. So I encourage anyone with business mind um, that has some uh, experience in, in, in IT to, to consider joining a uh, storage providing business in, in this region. Um, we'll give you a lot of help as well. Uh, and then for uh, developers, look out for FEM um, upgrades uh, and also uh, interplanetary consensus, which will, uh, it, which is a game changer for Filecoin blockchain technology. We also have an upgrade called F3 Finality coming very soon. I think it's going to finish in this quarter. That will drastically improve the experience of uh, any kind of uh, DeFi projects on uh, on Filecoin and making derivation a lot easier, uh, faster experience. So. Uh, and um, uh, last but not least, we are improving a lot of our retrieval um, uh, retrieval speed. So we hope that um, people can participate in retrieval uh, network and also use that uh, to accelerate their content being shared on IPFS. Yeah. Uh, Jenks, I'd love to ask you all about IPC, fast finality, and, um, uh, and, uh, and retrieval, but I think we're out of time. So... Uh, I would just add that I had a very compelling conversation with Alan Cho of Zeta Cube um, about their uh, bid to digitize uh, some records that the Korean government is keeping and some antiquities uh, and store them on Filecoin. So for me, that was a very compelling uh, conversation. Uh, Irma, thank you so much. Jenks, thank you so much. For DWeb Decoded Podcast, I'm still not Aaron Stanley. Uh, please check in next time. Uh, thank you for, for listening. From Hong Kong, goodbye. Bye.